say unbelievable, what, but what's unbelievable about this? I mean, unless you're new to following Eagles football, you shouldn't be surprised at all with what happened today. Now, credit where credit is due to give the proper respect. Kirk Cousins, <laughs> he, he, I may be saying now he's a shitty quarterback, but his team won the fucking game. The rushing game, all oh, the running game, the Redskins running game was shut down all game until the final two fucking minutes when it fucking mattered. Alfred Morris was brick walled all fucking game until the final drive. And he's just. God damn it! This team fucking pisses me the fuck off. I say to myself, why? Why do I let it piss me off? Why? I just expect this shit. Happens every fucking year. They fucking stick a dagger in my heart every fucking. You know what? Not even waste the fucking energy to keep that lamp on right now. Um, I, I swear to God, I almost just turned around and fucking threw it against the wall right now, and I'm remaining an ounce of composure here. You know, I, I, at halftime, I was tweeting out, you know, what's the argument to to keep Bradford in the game? And I, I was saying, it's not so much that I think Bradford absolutely sucks or anything like that, because you can only do so much behind this offensive line. When you're getting a maximum of two seconds of protection from the defenders that are rushing in, or when you see one extra guy on that line, or the defensive line, and they just... Boop, boop, no one's going to try and double block, just you know, stammer him at the line or something. Boop. I'm beyond frustrated because, you know, it's it's one thing. Losing happens. It's the NFL. Any given Sunday's happen and all that shit. But to lose in ways like this where your kicker misses a 30-yard field goal and an extra point, and that was – if I did my math correctly and I suck at math, but that's three points and then the extra point is a fourth point and the Eagles lost by three points in the game, which means that one extra point was the difference in the entire fucking – now, granted, I know Washington probably would have went for it. Well, probably. They would have went for a two-point conversion to tie the game on that final touchdown. But it's like, it's like just seeing things like this happen. It's like, of course they lose like this. Of course they lose to a team that they should be, that they're favored to win against on the road and all that shit. And again, credit where all credit is due. Washington played the better game. There's no one that is going to deny that. In fact, Washington was trying to hand the game over. They kept saying Oh, Eagles, you're on third down. Oh, here's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Here's a first down. Oh, second and 15. Oh, we'll do a holding. First down, Eagles. This is the entire second half. The Redskins were trying to hand us the fucking game. And they can't lose. This team is such a collection of fucking losers. And going back to what I said how at uh, halftime where I was like, you know, you know, what's the what's the argument to keep Bradford in this game? Because frankly, keeping Bradford in is just potentially letting him sit in behind the pocket to have his career ended. Because if he plays behind this offensive line for this entire season, his career will end. So why not put the more agile quarterback that can't play worse in Mark Sanchez at this point? I agree that neither guy feels taken to the promised land, so what the fuck does it matter? Why end, why, end, why end Bradford's career when you could throw Sanchez in there and have a better chance of someone's career not ending? Now, granted, I think no, no matter what quarterback you put back there, they're going to get fucked up behind this O-line. But you know what? As the game was going on, as that second half was going on, you know, I saw the offense start clicking and all, and then I yeah, got the bad taste of the entire first half of shit in my mouth still. But I'm like, you know, I'm like, they're letting Washington hang around. They retook the lead, but they're letting Washington hang around. The, 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 uh, Billy Davis, you fucking suck as a defensive coordinator. You're absolutely out of here after this season. But at this point now, I'm saying, I'm going from what is the argument to leave Bradford in a game behind this O-line to what is the argument to leave Chip Kelly in as head coach and GM of this team right now? I mean, what else do you have to see from this team? 
This was four piss poor performances, including that win against the Jets last week. This is four piss poor anemic performances in a row. That where you had flashes of life like you did in this game, the first half of the Jets game, which was frankly more due to Jets fuck ups. But you had flashes of like, it's like, oh wow, Miles Austin, wow, got a touchdown on him. Riley Cooper, Mr. KKK got a touchdown. KK Cooper, way to go. But then you just see a team that if they have an ounce of heart, an ounce of passion, and you know, I never had a good feeling about this game after the first drive for the Eagles. In fact, let, let me put a screenshot up here. All right, that's the first drive for the Eagles. In case you missed it, I was tweeting it out during live during the game. On top of that, the thing that kicked me in the nuts even more was the first drive from the Redskins that only netted a, netted a field goal. You had. Three, three and longs. In fact, you had a play that was the exact, exact same predicament as you had in week one in Atlanta, <coughs> where the offense is in a third and long. I think it was like a third and 16 or a third and 18. They're running a draw play up the gut just to get extra yardage so that the punter's not kicking out of the back of his end zone. First down. Same exact thing. I thought I was watching that Atlanta Falcons game all over again. But at this point, I know what this team is. I'm, I'm not – well, you know, I guess in the grand scheme of things, I'm grateful because I'm done getting my hopes up for a second. I don't care who they're – I don't care if they're playing the fucking Raiders next week. I, I don't care if, if Jamarcus Russell comes back to QB the Raiders and they're playing them next week. I'm not going to get my hopes up and think they're going to beat them. I – fuck – this team is fucking terrible. Just a collection of fucking losers. Losers. The only one, again, I don't feel bad for is Sam Bradford right now because there is only so much he can do when receivers are dropping passes. Now, granted, he's had his share of fuck-up plays himself, so he doesn't get a complete pass. But there's only so much you can do behind an O-line that is this fucking trash. You know what? I'm done getting upset this year. I'm done. Don't, you're not going to see another fucking video like this out of me this year. This is the last time I raise my blood pressure over a fucking loss from these losers. Because I'm going to just expect this team to lose. If they win, hey, Sunday surprise. And you know what? I don't want to hear a single fucking thing out of Eagles fans saying, Don't worry, man. The NFC East is still in reach. Cowboys are probably going to lose tonight. The Proud Cowboys are going to catch an L against the Patriots next week. Shut the fuck up. Go fuck yourself. I'm tired of hearing all this fucking, all this fucking happy shit of just saying, like, Oh, it's no big deal, man. We're just going to get some wins. We can still win the NFC East. Who cares? This team's going nowhere. This team's going nowhere. They're going to beat no one that's worth their salt in this league. None. <sighs> Again, it's it's not unexpected at this point. It's just not. It's it's expected. It's expected this team is going to lose, and they're going to lose abysmally. My God, we got a Sunday night, a Monday night, and a Sunday night football game coming up. We got to watch this Eagles team play in prime time the next three weeks. Be a laughing stock to the entire nation. It's bad enough that the Redskins fans, everyone in the NFC East is laughing at us right now. We got to be on prime time, get fucking raped on on prime time television now, three weeks in a row. I ain't looking forward to that shit. But you know what? The laughing, the pointing, everything is deserved. Like there's 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 nothing that anyone could say. Nothing about talks of how many rings your team's got or anything like that that can hurt more than than what this performance was. So I mean, like pile on, Redskins fan, pile the fuck on. I thought your team was a bunch of scrubs, and you know what? <laughs> They're not as much of a bunch of scrubs as my team is. That's all that matters at the end of the day. You guys deserve the right to brag and point and laugh. The Eagles, the rest of the league does too. Because frankly, the Eagles are one of the worst football teams in the league. There's no arguing that. There's no arguing that. I don't care. You can talk about the potential this team has out the ass. Bottom line is they don't show it. They don't show it. Oh, Dallas go loose and they shut the fuck up. <laughs> Just, unbelievable. I get, there I am using that unbelievable word. No, it's not. No, it's not. I have to correct myself every single time I say that. <laughs> oh, Dallas gonna lose tonight. 
it's just it's just fucking miserable. It's it's miserable to be four games into the season, and what's the hope? What, what is the hope? Like I'm sorry, I, I I can't be anything other than a realist here. There is no hope. Fuck that too early in the season shit. You have to see at least a hint of what they are doing in some sort of positive way. I'm sorry. One half-ass win against the Jets is, is not enough for me. Not enough for me to, to say, like, oh, you know, there's still, there's still ways in this team to get their shit together. I'm not going to get my hopes up for this team. Why should I? Because it's early on? Because Dez and Tony are out in Dallas? Fuck that shit. Drag it out to the front lawn and fertilize it. I, I don't care. Because, you know, what have you done for me lately, as the Janet Jackson song goes? And, th and that's the mindset that I'm taking. Again, I I I'm done having these angry little tirades after the Eagles lose. I'm just I'm just done with that. It's, just, it's not worth raising the blood pressure. It's not worth losing an ounce more sanity in my life that this team can take away with every fucking game. I'm just done. I'm just done. This team's a bunch of losers, and they're going to continue to lose. Chip Kelly fucking sucks. He's not an offensive guru. He's he's a guy that deserves to be in college and should go back to college after this season. You fucking took a team of guys that could play fucking football, got rid of starting offensive alignment, and replaced them with assholes. I'm sorry, just just blank holes, because it's just like running through just like running through a hole in the air. This offensive line right now. Like the defenders are lined up there. Is, is there someone there? Is there someone? No, there's not. Oh. There's Sam Bradford. Talked on long enough. Have a good day. and Go Dallas Cowboys. You know, I, I hope the Cowboys run away with the NFC East right now. I, 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 I could care less. I mean, <laughs> I'm just, I'm fucking frustrated beyond belief, people. Have a good day. I just love listening to Eagles fans, you know, bitch and moan and whine and cry because their team sucks so bad, which they do. Philadelphia Eagles, you know. And I know every other team talks shit. I get that. I talk shit even though the Cowboys haven't won anything in over two decades or whatever the case is. You know, even though that I have one of the most polarizing quarterbacks in the entire National Football League, but I defend him day in and day out, which I I do and I do gladly. You know, I'm an, I'm a Tony Romo supporter. I'm a I'm a Romo sapien, whatever they used to call it. I was all about the Romo momentum. When Tony Romo exploded on the league in 2006 and continued on in 2007. <clears throat> but see, the Dallas Cowboys fans, we at least have a reason to celebrate. We have a reason to even bitch and moan when we're losing. You know, when, when all odds are stacked up against us. You know, we have a reason to do that, to cry and bitch and moan. That's because the Dallas Cowboys and their fans know what success is. We know what it feels like to reach the pinnacle of the National Football League, the, you know, the, the brass ring of the National Football League. We know what that feels like. Philadelphia Eagles, they don't. So when you see them get on TV and you hear their fans and they're all talking all this noise like they've ever done anything, it gets, to me, it's annoying. And I know it's just simple to say that. Oh, it's annoying. I know it's just so easy to say that. Uh, because everybody's fan base is annoying. But your fan base is even more annoying when you've never ever won anything it's like what room do you have to talk negative 
about somebody else's fan base. And, you know, I know I was listening to Archie and he wasn't saying anything negative. But for the most part, you know, Eagles fans, in my opinion, are just like rude people. I want to get off that topic because that's really not the point of what I'm trying to say. All I'm trying to say is the Eagles, the Philadelphia Eagles football team is a collection of losers. Ironically, I say that right, right, right when I die in this game. But uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are are a franchise that, you know, they feasted on a division when it was weak. Back in 2004, 5, 3, 4, 5, what? They won like the division like, I don't know how many times they won the division back in the day. Um... But since the Romo era started, you know, the Eagles haven't been all that dominant. But here they are, talking all this noise, talking about people's old rings, the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we always talk about our old rings. Yeah, we do. Dallas Cowboys always talk about our old rings. Philadelphia Eagles fans are already saying that the Giants' rings are old. Oh, the Giants... You know, you haven't won since 2011, or whatever the case may be. But, the thing that all these Philadelphia Eagle fans are failing to realize is, we won. The The Dallas Cowboys won rings. The New York Giants have won rings. The Washington Redskins have won rings. And no matter how long ago it was, as a fan base of those teams, we still have that, those memories to latch onto. We have the good times. The only good times that the Eagles have is when they made it to the Super Bowl. Ooh, wow, they made it to the Super Bowl. Then they got, then they got shit canned. Their their starting quarterback puked in the middle of the huddle. And here it is, you you, you call Tony Romo a choker. And your starting quarterback in the Super Bowl, the most important game a football player will ever play, your quarterback pukes in the huddle of the Super Bowl. It's like, are you kidding me? What if, what if Tony Romo did that? Heck. If it was just a playoff game, you know, he would never hear the end of it. But here it is, Donovan McNabb puking in the Super Bowl. And Philadelphia Eagles fans has have the goal to talk. Now, I'm not I'm not knocking Donovan McNabb. I think he was a great quarterback. I still do. I mean, the guy was a winner. The guy was a winner so much so that when the Philadelphia Eagles drafted him, all the fans could do was boo. That's why the Philadelphia Eagles stink. They just drafted Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. The Philadelphia Eagles traded up six spots in like 18,000 draft picks or whatever. To get Carson Wentz, a guy who, if you go on YouTube, he doesn't even have any highlights. And the highlights you do see, they're all like, well, I was going to say they're all like close frame shit. But because he doesn't do anything special in the game. As a matter of fact, some of his signature plays, quote unquote, some of the highlights of the plays are, and I know they're broken down plays. But, it's still a point to make that some of Carson Wentz's highlighted plays are plays in which he is using bad football mechanics as it relates to being a, a quarterback. You know, he's, he's throwing a cross field, he's throwing across his body, and those are, those are his highlights. The guy's running, you know, maybe... Maybe he runs for a touchdown here or there. In 2012, when 
RG3 was drafted, I told my friends or whatever around me that RG3 wouldn't last four years in the National Football League. I think I actually said the NFC East. That he wouldn't last four years in the NFC East. And that's not because he sucks as a quarterback. I think RG3 is great. I wanted the Dallas Cowboys to sign RG3 to be the backup to Tony Romo. You know, just let him sit for a while. Let him learn. Not necessarily learn from Tony Romo or anything. I'm not saying that Tony Romo is this great guru. Although, I mean, I do think that. But, you know, just just let RG3 sit behind a quarterback for a while. Have no pressure on himself. You know? Just just learn to learn to play the game by watching it. You know? That's That's how much I liked RG3. But despite all that, as soon as he came to the league, because of his playing style, I said, there's no way that guy's going to last four years in the National Football League. More specifically, the NFC beast is what I used to call it. Because for as great as RG3 is, he's so tall and lanky as far as his legs go that it just seems like it would be easy for him to acquire injuries. Especially to his legs, his knees, man. But uh, other than that, Carson Wentz, though, oh, as far as the RG3 thing, Carson Wentz, to me, as far as his body shape goes, he looks like RG3. He's got a long body. He's got long legs. And if he gets hit the wrong way, he'll he'll tear an ACL. Just because of the way that his... His body habitus is, you know, like like his body shape. Now, I'm sure he's a big guy. Obviously, he is. I'm sure he's a smart guy. He's a tough guy. I'm sure all these things are true. But when you get into the moment of playing the game and you lose yourself just for a second and here it is, you're going to try to make a move on a 350-pound defensive end or linebacker, you're probably not going to win that win that um, physical assault, so to speak. And if he takes a hit the wrong way, because as a defensive player, you can't hit quarterbacks above the waist anymore. Man, you get a flag thrown you quicker than you will any, doing anything else. So the first time Carson Wentz takes that one hit, Below the waist, below the waist, and I'm not talking in the groin area. I'm talking about below his knees, even. He, he, and his career will probably go the way of RG3, and the Philadelphia Eagles will find themselves in a rebuilding mode again. Let's see. Red Lobster's Create Your Own Seafood Trios. You can try something new with every bite. Pick three of nine all-new creations for $15.99, like baked lobster Alfredo, chimichurri shrimp, and crab cakes bursting with crab meat. Just hurry in before it ends. Wow, did that game suck? Let's just start off right on the bat. Um, congratulations, Dallas. You won. You, you, you beat us just with Brandon Whedon's play alone. Guy went seven for seven with a touchdown. I'm, fu I, I am fucking dumbfounded to see that. To see that, and I'm like, you know, once once Romo got injured, I was like, oh, man, you know. It, it's like it's like the tide of the, the game felt like it was turned, and the Eagles start driving. They actually do something that resembled a real football team, and and I'm like, you know what? Even if the Eagles come back to win this game, it's like 
a shallow victory because it's like you basically would be barely beating a team with no offensive weapons whatsoever minus Witten. And I'm like, I'm like, how could you, how could you take pride in winning this game? But then again, <laughs> we could stop Brandon Whedon. <laughs> he, he looked like Joe Montana out there. <laughs> he, he looked better than Romo. I mean, it's like, it's like I mean, <sighs> this is such a bad loss. This is the this loss rivals the 2003 season. First year the link is open. NFC Championship game against the Carolina Panthers, and we put up three fucking points. Three points. McNabb had three interceptions. We had many interceptions through ten points in the NFC Championship game. Oh my god! I'm gonna start talking with a drunk voice because I feel like I'm fucking drunk watching this game. I, like like watching that game, I'm like, how does it, how does the team host the NFC Championship game? No, I put up three points. When does that ever happen? And I'm like, how the hell does a team with with no Scandrick, no Hardy, no Gregory, no McLean, no Tez, no Romo? I think I repeated a name there somewhere. But the bottom line is this Dallas team. This Dallas team was like an eighth of an actual football team. And they kicked our ass in Philadelphia. Oh, oh my god. Don't worry, Archfiend. It's no big deal. Dallas lost Romo and Dez. They aren't going to get by the Patriots. They aren't going to get by Green Bay. They are like they are, they may not win another game, but they might win the division with two wins. I was so completely fucking wrong about this team. I have never, never, ever felt so fucking just disappointed oh don't worry it's early on in the season fuck that noise fuck that noise they had like 120 yards offense today negative rushing yard well actually I think I think Murray actually got to like one or two yards rushing Sorry, it was worth that long of a golf clap. I tweeted out during the game. I was like, I was like, the people, at the NFL scheduling department must have been shaking their heads, going, "My God, we scheduled five primetime games for the Eagles. What the fuck were we thinking?" Don't worry, the season's still early. It's just the second week. No Dez, no Romo, no McLean, no Hardy, no Scandrick, no Randy Gregory. If you can't look competitive against that Dallas team that took the field, and don't get me wrong, most of the game was competitive. The defenses were both doing their things. And, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it was a terrible game for both teams. But Dallas got the win. And like I said, Whedon came in and went 7 for 7. If you can't beat a team that has a, a potential full team of NFL players on the injured list, one suspended... You expect me to have hope that we're going to beat the Panthers? Or we're going to we're going to beat the Buccaneers? Are we going to beat the Jets next week too? You expect me to feel confident out of the fucking performance against the eighth of a football team this team played today and got their asses kicked? Again, 
you know, a lot of people don't like all or nothing type fans like me because it's like, oh no, man, you gotta you gotta build momentum, you gotta win a playoff game here, and then hopefully build out the next year. I've seen my team win enough playoff games. I've seen my team win the division, go to the conference finals, go to Super Bowls. I've I've seen all that happen in my lifetime. No rings. No rings. No rings. That's all that matters at this point. Um, putrid, putrid, putrid effort, and um, especially on that Whedon touchdown, um, that looked like the Andy Reid team from three seasons ago that gave up on Andy, a team that just quit. And the fact that I'm getting the feeling that the team is quitting just two weeks into the season is very, very dangerous. Because if this season and this level of play goes any lower than what we just saw today, Chip's got to go insta-immediately. If I can create a word, like, immediately is not enough. I want to put a prefix of insta in front of it. Insta-immediately he has to be fired. I don't care if you just made him the GM and you're like, oh, well, we got to let him ride out at least another year. Got to do nothing. Confidence is gone for Chip. My confidence for Bradford is gone. My confidence for Murray is gone. Sproles, where the fuck were you? Matthews, I, 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 a snowman with an Eagles jersey would have caught more balls than Matthews did because at least the snow would give in and, and it, some of the balls would stick and they would stick into his body. Matthews is like clink, 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 clink. clink. Anyways, um, it's just the second week of the season. Um, here's hoping they can turn things around. That's what this team's done to me. It's just it just made me catatonic. Two weeks into the season, <laughs> Fox game of the week. <laughs> Sorry, America, for that one. Whew. And actually, I and a lot of people may sound say like I sound drunk or something in this video. I ha I haven't had a thing to drink all day. I'm just I'm like I'm like this this game just like mentally retarded my brain. It just it sucked all thinking process and, and logic out of my mind. Anyway, um. Congrats, Dallas. Um, nothing you could say about five rings or anything like that and the loss today can feel worse than what we had to endure or seen out of the Philadelphia Eagles today. So, you know, pile on on this video. It's it's all good. Just, you know, unload if you want. Um, have a good day. A better tomorrow. Um, fuck the Dallas Cowboys. Sorry, I got catatonic again there. And let's, let's take this on to...